Welcome back to the Good Morning Niger Show. It's time for our first guest. This morning on the show, we have joining us the president of the Nigeria Medical Association, Professor Innocent A. O. Uja, and we're looking at the state of the medical profession in Nigeria. What is the state of healthcare? What can be done to better it? And what Nigerians need to know? Thank you so much for joining us, Professor. Thank you very much. I'm grateful and I'm happy to be here. Thank you, sir. I think the first question I'll start with is um, the state of COVID-19. And I'm asking because even today on the show, we had people calling in to say that COVID-19 is a scam because they're not yet seeing dead bodies dropping on the road. We've had callers every day on the show call us to tell us that the government is scamming us and lying to us as to how, as per how real COVID-19 is. So um, in response to this, what are your thoughts or what would you have to say as per uh, the realness of COVID-19. Well, thank you very much. Um, I need to say that um, those who are calling to see their bodies on the road before accepting the fact that COVID-19 is a reality are living in delusion. Any one person that dies is very, very important to us. And if people are looking for, for dead bodies on the road, then that is very sad. The reality is that COVID-19 is real. You see, it was just like the case of um, HIV AIDS. When it started, people did not believe in it. They thought it was a scam, just like this. But when their relations were dying, or relations were getting very lean and they were HIV positive. They started seeing the realities of the moment. I think we should accept and agree that COVID-19 is real. Unfortunately, by the ethics of our profession, we will not display any dead body following um, in whatever circumstance. That is the ethics of medical profession. It doesn't matter what anybody says. Even disclosure of who and who, you could see that those who were positive for COVID-19 were the one who voluntarily owned up to the fact that they were positive for COVID-19. You will not hear from any doctor that this person I'm treating is COVID-19 positive. That is unethical, that's unacceptable. And that calls for punitive measures, if any doctor does that. So the long and short is that COVID-19 is real, and we must obey the basic rules. See, right. When we were saying that people should use condom for, for HIV AIDS, to prevent HIV AIDS, people did not believe it until it became very real, and people now started using condom. I'm not witnessing it, but I, I know they use it, because when you put it in a place and you don't see it again, it means it must have been used. Most likely. So the, the basic thing is that people should obey the advice from the medical profession. COVID-19 is real. And the, the prevention is not that difficult. Regular washing of hands, using of hand sanitizers, the uh, social distancing, and um, you know, ensuring that you, you you follow the basic hygiene and using face mask. And that is all. Is that so difficult that Nigerians are doubting the existence of COVID-19? I don't think so. Okay, so let's talk about the healthcare professionals and how COVID-19 has impacted the medical space. We know that not just around the world, but in Nigeria, we've had incidences of healthcare personnel who have tested positive to COVID-19 and some of them having to leave their family. So how exactly, give us a picture of how exactly this has impacted the medical profession. Well, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. It's all right, sir. What, one of the things you should know is that we know the risks associated with medical practice. Even when we had uh, Ebola, when we had um, HIV, the, uh, medical professionals were treating all those cases. They know the risks. And the first thing we know we pain in emergencies like this is universal precaution, what we call universal um, uh, infection prevention and control. We have to train in that. 
so that we take maximum precaution when we're handling such infectious conditions like COVID-19. Unfortunately, um, despite the, the precautions and the, the risks being observed, some would necessarily would go, go down with that. It's not, it's not a pleasant thing, but that is the risk we take in life. Every profession has a risk in medicine, infectious disorders, and even accidental injury during surgery and the rest. They are all risks that we are associated with. All we do is to ensure that we protect ourselves and protect the patients so that they do not come to additional harm as a result of the treatment. All right. so by and large, okay. we know that we are at risk, we are at in increased risks of dealing with these cases, but we are trained. And because we are trained and we further have uh, capacity development in specific areas to prevent ourselves from contracting the disease, many more would have come down if we had not been trained and we have not been observing the universal precaution. All right, speaking about um, protection, we've seen uh, several countries have complained about their accessibility to the protective gear, the PPE. We've seen some countries complain that they're running short. What is the status in Nigeria? Do we have enough? Okay, it seems that we have um, network issues. As soon as we can resolve that, we will come back to uh, continue. Infection prevention and control. Emergencies, infectious diseases. Okay, uh, we're still speaking with Professor Innocent A.O. Uja, who is the president of the Nigeria Medical Association. Unfortunately, it seems that we're having network connection issues. Pr Professor, can you hear me? Okay, we'll take a quick break. Uh, we will try to reconnect with Professor because this is a very important conversation that we must have. And as soon as we return, we'll be speaking some more with Professor. We're speaking with Professor Innocent A. Oja, who is the president of the Nigeria Medical Association, analyzing healthcare in Nigeria, what the situation is, what, what can be done to better the situation of things. Please don't go away. This is the Good Morning Nigeria Show, and we'll be right back with the conversation. Okay, yes, Professor is back. Professor, thank you very much. Uh, we had a bit of Sorry, network yeah. connection issues. I guess that's part yeah. of the hazards of COVID-19 because in other situations, we probably would have been with you or you'd have been in our studios. You, you, see, you see the changing world. Exactly. We have to adjust to the reality. Exactly. We must adjust to the reality that uh, COVID-19 has presented for us. All right, Professor, can you hear me now before I pose my next question? Okay. This time around, we might have to reconnect for real. So, Professor, can you hear yes, me now? Yes. Hello, Prof. Can you hear me? All right. Uh, we'll go on a very quick break. When we come back, we will be calling back Professor, uh, reconnecting the call with him and ensuring that it's, hopefully it's smoother this time. Please don't go away. Welcome back to the Good Morning Niger so, show. We are joined by Professor Innocent uh, A.O. Uja, who is the president of the Nigeria Medical Association. Hello, Prof. Can you hear me correctly? Can you hear me clearly now? Okay, we might have to disconnect, Prof., and reconnect again for a smoother uh, connection. Uh, but we have been having conversations with Prof. as regards coronavirus. Uh, how real it is, seeing that we've had several people calling to dispute the existence of this. We'll go on a very quick break again, and we apologize for the technical glitches. This is what COVID-19 has presented us with. When we come back, we will be calling Prof again, and we'll be having this conversation. Please don't go away. Welcome back to the Good Morning Niger Show. We apologize for the technical glitches that we have been experiencing, but that is the reality that COVID-19 has presented us with. We have to make use of technology. Today, we're joined by Professor, Professor Innocent A. O. Uja. Uh, Professor Innocent A. O. Uja is the president of the Nigeria Medical Association, and he's joining us today to talk about healthcare in Nigeria, focusing on COVID-19, what we need to know, and what can be done better. Thank you so much for joining us, Prof. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, uh, before we had that technical glitch, I had asked about uh, the availability of PPE because you had mentioned that 
the medical pre personnel in Nigeria are adequately protected to prevent them from uh, contracting the virus, even though, unfortunately, some have contracted it. And we're asking this because in several parts of the world, we see countries where they've been advocating against people buying the N95 mask because there's not enough protective equipment for medical personnel. What is the situation of things here in Nigeria? Do our medical personnel who are fighting on the front lines, do they have enough protective gear to ensure that they are adequately protected as well? Well, I, I think that uh, you, you know that this is one of the challenges that we have all over the world. In Nigeria, it's been a, a big problem to have adequate uh, PPEs. Uh, as a matter of fact, that's one of the discussions um, the National Association of Resident Doctors were having with the federal government, that they need to be protected adequately. And therefore, PPEs must be made available, and we agree with them. We need to be protected. Uh, if we already have risk of attending to these patients, we do not have to have additional risks by the inadequate provision of PPEs. Uh, we have uh, the promise from the government that they will improve on this, and they, they said they've started supplying the various facilities, both isolation center and the hospitals, uh, where you know that everybody now appears to be carrying, um, be positive for uh, COVID-19, except, of course, if it's, if it's uh, tested. So we need to protect ourselves whether, in fact, the, the, they are positive or not, because prevention is better than cure. And it's our belief that the government, when we say government, it's not just the federal government. The state governments are also involved. They should up their games too so that our health workers, not just doctors, our health workers will be protected okay. from the disease. And if we have that as a basic minimum, we'll be very happy. You had mentioned the conversations between the doctors and the federal government. We've seen that they've been back and forth as regards payment of hazard allowances and strikes. First, uh, the med red Medical Association had given the government a two-week ultimatum, stating that within that two weeks, if the government had not responded to its demands, it would go on strike. Eventually, he did go on strike. After a while, the strike was called off temporarily. And uh, two days ago, we reported in the news how the Medical Association had stated that the strike will be revisited in July if the terms and conditions are not yet met. Please give us an insight into what these terms and conditions are and what is the state of the relationship in the right now between the medical professional and the federal government? Well, let me make a correction. Uh, the Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors is an affiliate of Nigerian Medical Association. Nigerian Medical Association did not call for strike and did not go on strike. However, the Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors uh, went on, on strike as a result of uh, failure of, um, of implementation of some of the demands they made. As far as um, the PP is concerned, uh, we, they, they promised and they've started supplying. Whether it is enough or uh, not enough, we will monitor, because it's good to monitor to make a, a definitive statement. Uh, the issue of uh, hazard allowance, I don't think that is the major issue. The major issue is about protection uh, you know, of, um, of lives of, the, of health workers who are involved in the treatment of, of uh, COVID. 19. However, in doing so, they needed to be paid hazard allowance. And um, after the front, like you said, after the front and back uh, uh, discussions, uh, the federal government has started paying and the strike has been suspended. But our prayer is that let it not, let, let the government fulfill most of the, of, the, of the promises so that strike, do not, we don't need a strike at this moment. And we believe that we all, the government should listen and do the basic uh, needs and demands of the resident doctors so that the work can go on uninterrupted. We do not need a strike at the moment. The mood of the country is not in that. But unfortunately, as um, the resident doctors said, they were pushed to the wall. And uh, we didn't need to go to that stage. So our prayer is that uh, there should be no further strike and um, what it will mean that the government will fulfill its own obligation to the resident doctors. 
All right. Right before COVID-19, we've also seen this has not been uh, COVID-19 was not the first time we've seen a strike. Doctors going on strike because they were grossly dissatisfied by the federal government. <laughs> Doctors have gone on strike several times, and uh, we want to know what exactly um, was the reason or before before COVID-19. Also, we see that there's. There's been a mass exodus of our doctors outside the country. We've seen young doctors who finish um, housemanship, and the next thing they're reading, to, they're writing exams, preparing them to preparing themselves to go abroad and study abroad or to go and work abroad. Uh, what is the state of uh, of the healthcare in the country? Uh, uh, one time, a minister once said that uh, we are we have enough doctors in Nigeria. That's why we're exporting the doctors that we have uh, abroad. But we we speak with some of these doctors. A lot of them are not very much satisfied with the way things are in the country. So what are some of the grievances that these doctors have that have caused them to go on strike before COVID, as well as caused them to want to leave the country and go work abroad? Well, um, as a journalist, I thought that's part of your job, to investigate why this is happening. That is what we are doing, um, sir. That's why we are asking no, no, you. We are no, no, you go to the field. You go, no, no, one person cannot answer all the questions. If you go to the field, you collect data and use the evidence to make a statement. The reality is that the work environment in Nigeria is not the best. Uh, we, we all know that. A situation where a patient has to wait hours on end to see a doctor. If we have enough doctors, you have enough doctors, that will not arise. If we have a conducive environment where all the basic equipment you need to practice, it's, it's available, people will not be dissatisfied. It's not only about money, it's about work environment. And we believe that once the government is addressing, and when we say the government, let's not make this mistake of feeling that it's only the federal government. As you know, we are told that health is on the concurrent list. And therefore, the state governments also must up their game because uh, many of the people live with the state governments. But the federal government also is involved. The federal government gives the policy a direction right. to the states. And uh, through the National Council of Health, they work together. And we believe that once the work environment is good, people will not leave Nigeria. It's not just about money. It's about being satisfied with the, uh, the practice, the quality of practice you are, you are, you are rendering. Uh, even then, the, poor, the, the pay is also poor compared to what happens even in um, areas that you believe that they have sufficient doctors. A, a minister saying that we have enough doctors, you and I uh, will look, we agree that what he says, maybe I will say that he was misquoted because you couldn't have too many doctors. How many doctors do we have in local governments? As I talked to you, I think apart from Southwest states, the primary health care facilities are not manned by any doctor in most of the local governments of this country. So where are the doctors that they say that we have enough of them? I think that I was being misquoted. The reality is that we don't have enough. Even in the developed countries of Europe and America, they still do not have enough doctors. They, they still import doctors from developing countries like Nigeria. And you know that doctors in Nigeria are very, very well trained. And that's why they are sought after everywhere in the world. And when they leave this country, they make the best use of their brains and their skills and their knowledge. So we are not found wanting. All we need is work, good work environment. Equipment should be ready. We should be able to have steady supply of electricity. Diagnostics must be made available. These are basic things that we need of any hospital. So by and large, uh, the dissatisfaction is not necessarily because of money. It's because the work environment is rather poster. And even if the dissatisfaction is, is uh, about money, I don't think that's an unfair thing to ask for because a laborer is deserving of his wages. So I wouldn't think that that's an unfair thing to ask for. So I'd like to ask you before I let no, you go. Not, not unfair. It's not unfair. Yes. Uh, what I'm saying is that it's not, not the only factor. Yes, okay. All right. Before I let you go, sir, my final question is as regards um, our, our fight against COVID-19. There have been arguments that the isolation centers be extended. And, but beyond the isolation centers, testing centers, that private facilities be enabled or given the capacity to 
run these tests. Some, uh, and that if these private facilities are given the capacity to run these tests, we'll be able to conduct more testing and be able to up our fight against coronavirus. What are your thoughts on this, sir? Well, I, I think that that is the right thing to do. You see, whether it is private or, pri or public, they are all treating Nigerians. And provided they meet the minimum requirement of accreditation, why not? And I think there's some, some laboratories in Lagos are also involved in the testing. But you must meet the, the basic and uh, you must pass through the accreditation process. It's not just anybody, any lab that wants to start, then they'll be given no. There must be accreditation, they will pass through accreditation, be monitored, and there will be quality control to make sure that the results they are getting is what it is. I think that that is the very most important thing. It's not about where it is done. It's about who's doing it and what is being, what is being done and the quality of, of, of the outcome. All right. Thank you very much for joining us, sir. This has been a, a very eye-opening conversation. And we're, we're hoping that we don't have to constantly have these conversations about going on strike. And our medical personnel around the country, I, their demands are met with adequate uh, personal and protective equipment as well. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, any final words to Nigerians as we push forward, as well as to our medical doctors watching, you know, as we're pushing forward in the fight against COVID-19? Final thoughts? Well, yeah, the final words are that the doctors should and health workers should continue to show their commitment to healthcare facilities in Nigeria. And that Nigerians should believe that COVID-19 is real and we should obey the basic protocol of hand washing, face mask, social distancing. Uh, if we do this, uh, you, of course, the use of hand sanitizers. If we do this, we will contain the disease. And of course, the, we, we plead with federal government to continue to support this, this uh, response because it is something that um, we was not prepared for, but we have, it is a must that we have to do it. So the response should be solidly supported right from uh, the, 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 the political leadership to the, to the Ministry of Health and, of course, to the healthcare providers. In that case, we work in unison to prevent uh, this pandemic, which was totally unpro uh, uh, expected and, and therefore was not provided for. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. This has been a very good conversation. We'll be joined by Professor Innocent um, Uja, who is the president of the Nigeria Medical Association, and he's talked to us about uh, the current situation of things in our country as regards the fight against coronavirus and the way forward. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.